Hello everyone and welcome to our all new download, bringing you the latest in Catholic news and discussion. I'm Michael Voris, joined today by Paul Morano and Brad Eli. How you doing guys? In our new format, designed to handle the large amounts of news now surrounding the church, we begin the download each day with an overview of a few headlines. As usual, we've got lots to report on today. A Belgian bishop speaking out, the Second Amendment on the march in Virginia, and Trump declares abortion is not a right. Brad, take it away. In church news, a Belgian bishop is defending Cardinal Seurat and Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI amid blowback to their new book. Last Friday, Archbishop Emeritus André Joseph Leonard supported Benedict's right to speak out in defense of priestly celibacy. The retired prelate called on brother bishops to speak up and discuss the ambiguity that has plagued France's pontificate for years. He warned that in today's climate, what begins as an exception to the rule, such as allowing married clergy in the Amazon, quickly becomes the new norm. In national news, thousands of gun rights activists gathered at Virginia's Capitol on Monday to protest gun control. The rally comes as Virginia lawmakers consider new anti-gun legislation that critics say violates the right to bear arms. In the lead up to the protest, leftist media stoked fears of racism and violence and Democratic Governor Ralph Northam declared a state of emergency. But the gun protest happened peacefully, with no incidents of violence and zero arrests. Also in national news, the Trump administration again has said there is no such thing as a right to abortion. In a speech last Thursday, Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar told an international gathering of health leaders, quote, I stated this fact to the United Nations this past September, and I'll repeat it here. There is no international human right to abortion. On the other hand, there is an international human right to life. He also referenced the remarks that President Donald Trump made last September in his address to the United Nations. You know, you look at all this, guys, and, uh, you know, what's the single thing running through all of this? Truth. Truth. That truth. Yeah. You know, the truth of, you know, the Belgian bishop saying, you know, look, guys, let's have a discussion about the truth of the faith here and the everything truth that's going always on. always supports life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything yeah. is inter interwoven. Again, it's one of the reasons we do this show, so we can pull all of these things that seem, you know, they are their own distinct stories, but there's always themes and threads running through them. Well, the left's yeah. always using lies and deception, really. They are. And another bishop that called that out, Cardinal uh, Loverde in Spain, he's saying the left is using lies and this uh, political censorship and that to control the narrative. How many times do we get that here? Oh, Where yeah. you get fake Nancy Pelosi Always. and all these people, they're spinning, well, the Catholic Church and I believe this. I, and I'm blah, a Catholic blah, blah. and I'm a good human. She just went off that ridiculous scene where she went and yelled oh. at the reporter and got, I'm a Catholic. I would never hate anybody. What? Yeah, so what <laughs> you, 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 hate, you hate kids in the womb. Jesus called yeah. it out too. He said, your father's the father of lies. So it's, really. It's a biblical principle right. that lies lead to death. And sure. that's why we have a culture of death today, because we have a campaign of lies. It's why the media is, you know, and I'm speaking obviously biasly, because I'm hold my whole career in it, but it's why the media is so critical to it. I mean, you know, Father John Harden mm. called it the Luciferian media. The yeah. idea that, you know, before, uh, you know, before the invention of mass media, you know, 200 years, what, 100 years ago, whatever, the, uh, that the powers of the diabolical had to sort of play on each individual yes. person. Yes. Now they can play on a very select number of people and who control the message that everybody no in the world sees. It's amazing. Well, that's why the only game changer, really the only game changer in the last 50 years now that really has put a kink in that whole process is social media. Right. If it wasn't for the rise yes. of independent Catholic no media, question. independent so and social media, and the ability for everyone out there to be basically a reporter. Well, right. It brings back the power of the individual, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the, the two sides of the old media, journalism and entertainment, have both been, uh, you know, succumbed to the pressures of the evil one, well, this as, is a as, as academia has. So you have the entire media and academia uh, being, you know, permeated with, with, the, with the lies and falsehoods of, of the secular humanist movements. Thanks be to God that we have this new media now that we can... Um, Which is why they're attacking it. They want, the, they want uh, this clamped down. No question. <laughs> and, and it's really a, a call to the faithful Catholics out there and everybody else interested in the truth to really be part of that dissemination of yes. truth. Gathering of the truth, send in the stories. You're the boots on the ground out in many places. We only mm. know about stories because they're being reported by the yeah. people. But then also take that truth out. You've got your Twitter, your Facebook, style. and all the social yeah, media. Yeah, you, you have a duty to inform people of the truth when the culture is so filled with lies and deceptions. You have a duty a very serious to say duty. the truth. Old style Catholicism, let the, the priest and the, and the bishop and the, and the nuns do it. Uh, that's, 
Well, that that is the not case for 50 years. Yes, that yeah. is not what is uh, being called for here. Yeah, if, you, if you're not going to be standing up for the truth, you're going to be yeah. steamrolled by lies. It's really going to happen. And it is happening. It has been happening. The only yeah. thing that stops that is the people out there who will stand up for the truth and using the weapons they have, such as social media. When you look at the, uh, the, the, the not just the duty, but actually the grace, the blessing to be alive in this time when so much is at risk. The, everything's up for grabs right now. You can, you, know, you can talk about the 2020 election, still a bit off, but is in process now. All the impeachment stuff going on, yeah. everything. You have a opportunity to stand up and defend the truth because of the current culture. If it's I, really a blessing. If I was reading the book of life that God authored, because he is obviously the author, this chapter 15 or whatever chapter we're in now would be very exciting. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be able to put down the book. Yeah. It's like, who's going who's gonna to step up? You know, what's going to happen here? Who's going to be the new heroes? Who's going to be the new saints that God is going to raise up? Yeah, that's a good point. That's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. That's the uh, headline recap today. We're going to step away for a couple seconds. And when we come back, right back, the obligation, the right and the obligation of defense. Don't go away. Right back. Things are changing in America. Now is the best time to turn to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Join us on pilgrimage to Mexico City. As was discussed in our headlines recap, around 20,000 Americans gathered yesterday in Virginia to protest, and it seems the liberal established media was sad that there was no violence. <laughs> Marchers even picked up trash and left the area in front of the state capitol cleaner than they found it. Well, Democrats have been pushing their agenda to take firearms out of the hands of law-abiding citizens, but the U.S. Catholic bishops have thrown in their lot with them. Here's Church Militant's Rodney Peltier with more on the bishops and gun control. In the wake of mass shootings, U.S. Catholic bishops continue to call for stricter gun control. El Paso, Texas, Dayton, Ohio, Gilroy, California, three of the most recent high-profile shootings within the last month. While some Protestant denominations are encouraging members to carry firearms and train for shooter scenarios, Catholic bishops are trying to disarm firearm owners on church property. In 20 years, there have been 18 church shootings, with only two happening on Catholic church property. But more and more bishops are disarming law-abiding parishioners, turning churches into potential hunting grounds for mass shooters. In fact, the vast majority of shootings, fully 94%, occur in gun-free zones, according to statistics from the Crime Prevention Research Center. Following the August 4th shooting in Dayton, Ohio, the U.S. bishops issued a call to change national policy on firearms. In 2017, they declared the need for a, quote, total ban on assault weapons, demanding things that are already state or federal law, including background checks, gun trafficking, limitations on the purchase of handguns, and gun locks. As U.S. bishops continue to echo Democrat talking points, some are asking why they aren't considering the possibility that their measures may make the faithful less safe, not safer. Rodney Pelletier, Church Militant, Detroit. Well, the Catholic Church is very clear about gun control. The Catholic Church, not American Catholic bishops right now, who are kowtowing to the, to the leftist agenda to take guns away from law-abiding citizens. But the Catechism of the Catholic Church actually has a quote here from the... Uh, catechism? Catechism of the Catholic <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't have the actual number written down, but... Quote, the legitimate defense of persons and societies is not an exception to the prohibition against the murder of the innocent that constitutes intentional killing, end quote. Now this dates back all the way to the greatest doctor of the Catholic Church, St. Thomas Aquinas in his Summa Theologica in the 1200s saying, quote, the act of self-defense can have a double effect, the preservation of one's own life and the killing of the aggressor. The one is intended, the other is not, end quote. Now, Catechism 2263, by the way. Thank you, 2263. You got it. The, the Catholic Church actually is saying there's also a, a grave obligation to actually protect those who are under your care. We have another quote from the Catechism that says exactly that. So when you're actually talking about who can bear arms, anybody can bear arms who actually has the 
uh, uh, legal, you know, I'm not criminally insane, mm. I'm not whatever, but you actually have the right to do that because your right to preserve your own life is an actual right. If someone is unjustly, now let's look at if you're in a home, mm. that's a scenario. If you're in, against an unjust aggressor, who will criminal break it in your home? If you are in society, the society itself has the right to defend that society against a criminal and unjust. And then if you have a country against an unjust aggressor in war, it's the same principle, mm. yeah. but it gets more and more stacked as you get above. If I have a child in my home, I have a grave obligation to protect. If it's a society here, we have a grave obligation to protect against that criminal mass shooting aggressor. And if you're against a nation, you have a, an, a right, a duty to protect that nation from an unjust aggressor and to have a standing army if you need to and an armed personnel. Yeah, there's a couple of thoughts here that enter my mind. You mentioned in Catechism 2263 the principle of double effect. Now, a lot of people would say, well, you can never kill because of the fifth commandment, you shall not kill, as you folks, I'm sure, know. The Hebrew word. Murder. Yeah, the Hebrew word is closer to murder than to kill. So the question is then, what differentiates between simple killing, not simple, but killing and murder? And that is the principle of legitimate defense that the Catechism speaks of here. The principle of double effect relates everything to that because if the only way to stop an unjust aggressor, whether you be an individual, uh, a, a nation or what have you, if the only way to stop that person from harming the innocents, including yourself, is to deal them a lethal blow, then you have a right to do that. That is not murder, that is killing in self-defense, and there are four criteria that we don't have to go over right now that, um, that enable one to, um, to justify this under the principle of double effect. The bad effect, of course, is the death of the unjust aggressor. The good effect, is the protection of the innocents, and there's a couple of other uh, criteria there, but that's basically the, the basic principle there of double effect. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting that, that you know, even the uh, founders of the Republic, mm -hmm. not Catholic, uh, one was, uh, not Catholic, some of them anti-Catholic, understood mm -hmm. the very basic principle at yeah. work here. It's very basic, you have a right to live Yes. That's what it's all based on. <laughs> you have a right life. to live and continue yeah. your life, and then all those other rights flow from it. You have a right to live and mm -hmm. pursue happiness and liberty and that sort of thing, but you have yeah. to be alive to do that first. So if somebody's got a gun to your head, you have a right to take that gun away from them if you have to do it by well, shooting their head off. Going back to the, everybody says, thou shalt not yeah. kill, my goodness. The, mo uh, the mosaic culture back then, they put people to mm -hmm. death. They had wars going on with other countries. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that gave us, from through, through them came the yeah. revelation, thou shalt not kill. As you say, it's closer to murder. They slaughtered animals in the temple, and they had, mm. you know, defense in society. So they understood very clearly. The ones who gave us that tenant, yeah. or came through them, understood very clearly that it had nothing to do with just taking up uh, an aggressor's life. It had to do with taking human innocent life. Well, let's be clear here too, because even if you have to deal a fatal blow to an unjust aggressor, love of neighbor is not extinguished. That does right. not cease. You're not hating your neighbor by defending yourself. Yeah, I, as you you know, look through the whole panoply here of what yeah. we're talking about and go big picture, what are we talking about? We're talking about truth. Yeah. A supreme truth is human life is sacred, needs to be protected, but that even that falls from the idea of truth. There is objective truth, there's objective morality, and it doesn't just live floating around up there in the ticker. It actually mm. lives down here in concrete circumstances. You know, during your segment, there was some video running of that uh, mom coming in, you know, a bunch of thieves were in her house, and she comes out, starts shooting them off they go. Uh, she mm -hmm. had children in the house. Yeah. In the background on that story, she had children in the house. So what's, uh, yes, she's defending their lives, but the truth is, the truth of the matter, is that those children have a right to live. Whether yeah. they're in her home or they're in her womb at some other point, they have a right to live. And the moral object is to defend the innocent, not Correct. to kill the unjust aggressor, even though he may die in the process. And that's, that's what double effect is about. Yeah, you know, when you think about the, uh, you know, when the truth itself, himself, was crucified. Mm. Yes. And, uh, and it's interesting on this issue of truth, immediately before the order is given, Pontius Pilate looks at our Lord, who just yeah. says, anybody who hears what the truth, irony. hears my voice, and he looks right at him and says, hmm, he's looking right at truth, and he says, what is truth? And then he goes mm -hmm. out and you know, washes his hands and said, oh, I don't need to do with this, this is all on you guys, and sends him off to his, to his crucifixion. It's a really, 
uh, that, that the U.S. bishops would claim and push the idea that, oh, you, you, know, the, you know, we have to limit gun control, we have to enforce gun control and all of that, uh, against the catechism, <laughs> as you said, and Thomas Aquinas, and common yeah. sense, yeah. and just things that atheists could agree on. We know that there are a number of dioceses around the country that are mm -hmm. taking their cue from the USCCB, and bishops and archbishops in various places are quietly getting the word out to pastors, mm -hmm. uh, pastors of parishes, saying, you know, don't like rile anybody up, but get the word out there that I'm the bishop and I don't want guns in the Catholic parishes. Mm. And you, know, you all have to just think about that shooting in Texas. What happened if that, the one of the elders or whatever is a Protestant church, or the elders said, oh no, no guns. That guy would have mowed down who knows how many people before the former sheriff just shot him and killed him. You need to see gun control as the period on the end of the sentence that pro-abortion uh, advocates want to get out there that all killing is the same. Yes. Now, they're going to say that uh, taking of human innocent life and taking of you know, uh, non-innocent yeah. life is it. Why is that? Because it's the Democrat left, the pro-death and the pro-lies left, that want to have this lie out there, the seamless garment, going back to Vernon, that says abortion is the same as just wars, is the same as defending uh, you know, uh, um, capital punishment, mm. and uh, self-defense. Right. All of that wants to be the same. They're not saying it's any of it's good, maybe abortion, mm. but they're trying to say it's not an intrinsic evil. Right. Abortion's intrinsic evil. It can never intentionally Use, kill an innocent human exactly. being. Exactly. Yes. But, but death penalty, but that depends on if, it, if the person is at what degree of he and his crime is in, yes. involved. And just awards, uh, defending a society, right. defending yourself with gun control. But they're basically trying to roll it all into abortion, and that mm. goes back to Bernadette and his seamless garment. And it's because they want the Catholic vote out there. Yeah. That's what's going on here with all this, and that's why they pay off these bishops who are left-leaning. They give them so much money to, to count out of their line, so they will. everyone will vote Democratic. They don't want to have this abortion as its own issue. They want to blur it with everything else. Yeah, so they you can't, stop they, talking they about it. They can't do it. You know, the abortion issue, specifically because of the truth of human life, and it must be defended, innocent human life can never be killed. Because of that underlying principle, that really is what opened up the Catholic vote, so-called so Catholic vote, which at the time, prior to Roe v. Wade, was pretty much a monolithic vote. I mean, if you were, if you were a, a, a Catholic prior to Roe v. Wade, I believe the numbers, I went and checked them, and they're off the top of my head right now, but I think it was like 80 or 85% of the vote of Catholics Democrat. went to the Democrats. No question. And that was just historical. It was the immigration issue from you know, way back. They were not back. the party and of death at that, that time. They and then they became the party of death, and all of a sudden you cleaved mm. the Catholic vote. 30 or 40 percent of Catholics simply abandoned the Democratic yeah. Party and came over to the Republicans. And now, so you really have sort of two different Catholic votes. Yes. And it's all around this issue of That's abortion. So, so for the bishops to blur it or sort of cast mm. their lot with the party that wants all that all blurred together is the same thing. Mm. It's not the same thing. You know those guys Very running good. around in that video and so yours good. getting shot at for breaking into the house? Yeah. How, um, how in the heck are, is, is that the same as a baby in the womb? I mean, yes, they're live, they're living beings, but that's about where it ends. Those people are in there to, who knows what, at least steal, probably mm. kill, maim, rape, whatever, you know, and you're not allowed to defend that? If you just get that one basic principle that underlies the fifth commandment down, you're gold. It's and easy. that is, you can never intentionally kill an innocent human being. Intentional and innocent, those are the two yes. key words. and human being. I mean, right. a, lot, a lot of radical animal <laughs> rights activists are saying you can't kill animals. No, that's well, that's, a, that's another show. Well, God shouldn't have made them taste but, so good. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to talk a little more about the Second Amendment, but I guess we don't have that much time, so. You're well, on. the defense of others and the defense of perennial truths. Being a good Catholic requires we know, love, and defend the truth. Because at the end of the day, truth is a person. Our Lord said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. All right, we're stepping away for a moment, just 10 seconds, and when we come back, the sanctuary of shame. Yes, it's as shameful as it sounds. We'll be right back after this. Again, in the all-new download, we're dedicating each weekday to a specific theme and highlighting a story that fits that theme. Today's Tuesday, 
And it's time for Sanctuary of Shame. The winner of this week's dubious distinction is Richmond, Virginia's Bishop Barry Knestout. You may remember last week there was a massive outcry when the fake consecration ceremony of an Episcopal woman as a bishop was announced. It was scheduled to be held at St. Bede Parish in Williamsburg. Well, thousands of Catholics complained and the event was moved to another location. But no thanks to Bishop Nestout. It was Susan Bunton Hayes, the woman supposed to be made a bishop, who moved the event, noting it was causing, quote, dismay and distress to Catholics. Nestout said he received her letter, quote, with great sadness. You know, it's interesting, it's interesting that Nestout, of course I did the vortex on this yesterday, but it's interesting that Nestout, uh, he didn't perceive the distress and everything of Catholics. She did. I mean, hats off to her, uh, you know, on, on that regard. Hats off to That's her. That's a good point. It, you know, it, and then yeah. he's all sad that she recognizes that, oh, I have to yeah. move and all there's this controversy and everything. What right. about your sheep? Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, the whole thing with regard to using the, you know, there is a certain amount of leeway in canon law. A bishop can make a call to use the church for some type of maybe, I don't know, a Catholic play. You can't use it somewhere else. I, I'm not really for that type of stuff. But there's but a certain leeway okay. there to do something, a Christmas caroling or something. But the idea at concerts sometimes, okay. you know, particularly in the cathedrals okay. in Europe. But, you know, but that, this relates but, to holy or orders. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It yeah. relates to a heresy, female, something contrary to the faith. A female bishop of another denomination being celebrated in your church. I, I don't get it. I'm, okay. my, my first, and, and, and you got to kick Jesus out. And you well, he doesn't want to see Jesus that. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I'm out of here. Well, you've got to kick Jesus out. That's Thankfully, what, he has that's to what he said. The, the, the former pastor, not the current pastor of St. Bede's, but the former pastor about a year ago is the one who set this up with the Episcopalian Diocese mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And, uh, and so he went to Nest Out and said, hey, they want to do this here. And Nest Out's like, oh, that's mm -hmm. fine. Just make sure you take out the Blessed Sacrament. I'm like, yeah. well, what? What, does that, what does that tell you? <laughs> it's his church. Yeah. It's not yeah. your church, Bishop. It's Jesus' yeah, church. I, I believe yeah. it was we go back to 101 yeah. times talking about the loss of supernatural faith. I don't believe bishops really believe I mean, look at all these bishops that say you can have, you know, women deacons. Mm. Well, that's horrors, you know. What if you can't have a woman deacon, Holy you can have a woman horrors, priest, right. a woman bishop. And all these religions are all, what have we been saying for the last 50 years? It's false ecumenism. That all yeah. these religions are all, you know, it's just your matter of opinion and how you perceive it and all this type of relativism. I yeah. don't believe these bishops really stand on no. the fact that there is one true faith, one truth. I don't, I don't think they believe truth it. Truth itself. I don't think they believe it. There, no. There's a little background on that story uh, that... For years now, uh, I didn't have time in the vortex to report it, but for years now, the Catholic Diocese of Richmond and the Episcopal Diocese of Richmond, or whatever they call it, yeah. they have a, they're at a church, I believe it's called Holy Apostles, uh, at a church in, I think, Richmond, uh, where they merge and have dual ceremonies. Oh boy. Ceremonies mm. or rituals, and they've been doing that for years and years and years. There's more background to that story than just, that's why she asked. She asked the pastor, hey, can we have it here? Because in their minds, we're already doing all kinds of things together. Yeah. So yeah, they so have not do this. Yeah, it's exactly it. Yeah. And, you know, it's, uh, it, 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 there's, no way, there's no way that a bishop or any Catholic could look at that and say, oh, yes, yeah. this is fine. If that bishop or, or Catholic layman believed that the Catholic Church is the one true faith. And as Father Harden used to say, it's not a difference of uh, quantity. It's a difference in quality. One is a diamond, the other is nice shiny rocks. Well, let's say yeah. two Lutherans want to get married and it's a marriage ceremony, it's actually going to be valid, they're going to be validly sacramentally married. Right. And they say, you know, we love this beautiful church, can we have your permission to have our, you know, photo ops here or something when we have our ceremony there? There's possible because you're actually having a real sacrament take That's place. That's one thing, but we're talking about holy orders here. It, yeah. But we're also yeah. talking about and, if it's a heresy. secular event, there's something maybe just second, but here it's something contrary to the faith. Yeah. All right. Well, they're, having, they're standing we there to. doing this, and Jesus is right there, and they don't believe he's right there. Hello. No, no. Whenever I hear a story like this, I say to myself, I must be missing something. I have to be missing something. Maybe I'll find out what it is. Anyway, anyway, we need to stop yakking because our, our um, people that watch us have something to say. Again, we're bringing you viewer comments, and these coincide with our theme today of defense, specifically the defense of our society. Now, it's regarding an article published over the weekend by our own Martina Moiski, entitled Caravan Redux, Thousands of Migrants Trek Towards the United States. Viewer Hedley Lalar says, Immigration is being used as a weapon against U.S. citizens. Trump should realize that if he fails to keep his promises about immigration, 
He'll be the last Republican president this republic will ever have. That's true. And in other comments in that same article, Tony Biggs says, when the USA joins the third world, who will take up the cause? China? The Vatican? To put it in words the bishops understand, there will be no room at the inn. Love that name, Tony Biggs. That sounds like a guy who, if you Tony don't Biggs. listen to him, he's going to take care of you. Got a cigar, you, you know, a cap on. <laughs> Tony Biggs. But this, what about Hedley Lalar? That was an interesting one. <laughs> this is really the same thing, this whole mm. gun control and this forced immigration, forced yeah. illegal invasion of You don't get to defend yourself in your church, you know, because they, we don't want the, the pastor's going to tell you you can have no guns. You're going to defend yourself in the home. We want you to, you know, support the Democratic Party that wants to take all your guns away to defend the nation. No, no legal board. Nothing. I mean, the, no if defense. you can't see this, well, then you are willfully blind. Why would somebody who buys into the culture of death, the underlying philosophy of the culture of death, care about defending innocent life? Yeah. It makes, well, it no? could be a Freudian thing, too. We've, we've massively slaughtered tens of millions of innocent babies, and therefore we're mm. yammering on about, you know, protect bugs and, and, and gun right. control. Right. But, but this immigration thing, you really have it's to see for what it is. It's the Democrats wanting all these people coming up, beholding to all the handouts because they can't do for themselves. Yeah. And then they want the bishops to kowtow to this line. We give you lots of money, mm. tens of millions of years, yeah. tens of millions of dollars each year for that. And like you had said. Because um, they want is, that vote. It, well, well, what is a country without borders? Yeah, that's it. It isn't yeah. a country. Yeah, I mean, you need form and matter. And you can't have a country without borders. Yeah, yeah. This is just, it's, it's yeah. that simple. And the bishops support yeah. all of it, which means yeah. they are just sitting around waiting for the money. They're going to support the party they're that gives them off. money and whatever their thing is, and they're paid yeah. off. That's at a minimum. Another one, horrible possibility, maybe they actually believe and buy into all of this, and they're part of it. Well, one or the other. stand up for truth, love, you start believing lies. That's it. That's it. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us. Now, for the rest of the week and through next week, Brad and Paul will be regulars here on the panel, while some of us have the unpleasant duty of having to go to the retreat at sea. Yeah. So these brave soldiers are going to get to hold down. I know. Thank you. We yeah. appreciate it. But somebody's got to do it. You know. You're know, you going to hold down the frozen fort here, while others of us suffer in that warmth and heat of the Caribbean. <clears throat> So thanks guys, we're, you know, I'll take, I'll take the, take the, take one for the team. Yeah, that's that's good, thank you. Uh, we do have a near record of number of retreatants this year. I understand a large number of them are actually very new to the experience. The first trip, I think it was like 250, 260, and I think 220 or 30 are brand new. They've never been on that's before. Awesome. So that's very cool. So please keep them and us in your prayers that we have a very fruitful retreat. Remember, everyone gets access to the all new download through mid-February. After that, premium subscribers will have that access. The panel will be back here tomorrow, same place, same bat channel, all that crazy stuff. Don't miss time. it. <laughs> God bless you.